Sharks are a fish, so what makes a shark a shark is it's cartilaginous. My name is Amanda Hay, I am the Ichthyology Collection Manager here at the Australian Museum. I love sharks. The prickly dogfish, also scientifically known as Oxynotus bruniensis. It's found only in Australia and New Zealand. In terms of sharks, I have to say the prickly dogfish is my absolute favourite because it's weird and it's bizarre and it's just fabulous. Like you would never imagine a shark to look like a triangle. It's bizarre, it's just gorgeous. So sharks have denticles, which is basically tiny teeth, which is their skin. It's modified scales. But the prickly dogfish, the denticles are enormous. So it's kind of really prickly <laughs> as well as triangulated. It's, it's fabulous. Uh, the goblin shark, the scientific name is Mitsukarina alstoni. The goblin shark is found pretty much around the globe, particularly in the Indo-Pacific through from Japan to Australia. Fabulous because it's so, again, bizarre. <laughs> the goblin shark has this huge long snout and so we think that the reason that it has this extra long snout is because it means it's got extra sensory pores to be able to pick up prey. And the other amazing thing about the goblin shark, it has slingshot feeding. So the goblin shark has long skinny teeth pointed backwards inside its jaw and when it finds prey, it throws its jaws out of its mouth to capture, catch and swallow the prey. And it's amazing evolutionary feat. So instead of having really triangulated teeth, it's got needle-like teeth pointed back to its head so that when it catches the prey, it's very hard for it to escape. One of the other specimens we have on display is the ornate wobbegon, uh, Rectolobus ornatus. Anywhere close to the coast, you'd be lucky enough, you should be lucky enough to see a wobbegon. I love the wobbegongs, they are just beautiful. Their patterns, they're perfectly camouflaged into their environment. They're found rocky reefs in amongst um, seaweed and aclonia. Their patterning is spectacular. And how you can tell the different species apart is that fine patterning on the back of the body. And also they've got all these flappy bits around the bottom of their mouth. And how those flappy bits look also help us identify which species it is. One of the other great specimens we have is a small tooth cookie cutter shark, Isistius brasilensis. It's found out in the open ocean and it feeds at night. But this fabulous little shark, it's tiny. It's got really big eyes because it feeds at night so it helps to try and get as much light as possible to see what it's doing. But it probably doesn't really matter for the cookie cutter because it will eat anything that it comes across. It's eaten sonar equipment underwater. A long distance swimmer was in Hawaii swimming at night and had a little bit of a plug taken out of them by the cookie cutter. And you'll see animals with a perfect round shaped plug taken out of them. That's the cookie cutter. It has the teeth that when it latches on, it swivels and takes a cookie shaped plug. It's cute to look at, but it's quite voracious. Coffin ray Hypnos monotrigius. It's endemic, so it's only found in Australia, this species. What Actually, what I love about rays is people often call them flat sharks because they are a shark, but they're just flattened. The coffin ray is awesome because it's electrified. So if you were to find one in the shallows and you were to touch it, you'd get a really massive electric shock. So after really big storms, they, they can be washed up on the beach. If they're still alive, they can still give a shock as well. And the reason they're called a coffin ray is because particularly after they've been washed up on the beach, they kind of bloat, but they're the shape of a coffin. Sharks are a part of the whole ecosystem. So it's about learning more about what they do, um, but yeah, also just looking after everything that has a place in our natural world.